Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. I'd like to show you some of the features of the courtroom that are symbolic of and uh, implementations of the rule of law. I'm going to start by pointing to the coat of arms behind me. It's a symbol of the authority in the courtroom. It's important as a feature of the rule of law because you'll recall I said that a fundamental aspect of the rule of law is that there is defined authority. In the same vein, I'm wearing these robes which are also symbolic of the authority in the courtroom. Then I'd like to point out the microphones throughout the courtroom. These microphones record every word that is spoken in the proceedings. That's important to create a record of the proceedings so that there might be a review if needed or an appeal. I'm going to also point out the relative heights of the spaces in the courtroom because again that's part of the symbol of authority. The highest person seated in the courtroom is the judge. Now I'm sitting here on the bench which is the position that I occupy in the course of uh, any um, case and sitting here obviously gives me an entire overview of um, the proceedings that are, are before me. <clears throat> There's a seat to my left which is occupied by my tip staff who is part of my personal staff and who conducts legal research for me amongst other things and who assists me in the day-to-day -day running of um, everything that I have to do. Seated next in height is the judge's associate who typically sits in front of the judge and the associate assists the judge in the conduct of court work. Seated also in the courtroom you might see a monitor. Whose responsibility it is to take down everything that is said in the course of a trial and that's then converted into a transcript which uh, I get at the end of every given day and it sets out everything that has happened in the course of um, the proceedings on that day. There's also a court officer in uniform who manages the security of the courtroom and assists in bringing for example a jury into the courtroom and assists with the movement of other people into and out of the courtroom. Seated in fact, just above where my associate sits is the witness box. They're in fact the next level from the judge in the courtroom. That's more so that the witness can be seen by everyone in the courtroom. Again, there's a microphone in front of the witness so that the witness's evidence can be recorded. To facilitate the taking of evidence, we also have screens in the courtroom. There might be some video evidence to be played or it might be that people are appearing remotely and they appear on the screen in the proceedings. The next level in the courtroom is the jury box and there's seating there for the jurors. In this state, we can now impanel up to 15 jurors in any trial that is now likely to go for more than a month. Previously, the cutoff period, for want of a better term, was three months. The four person sits where Emily is seated and there's a microphone in front of the four person seat so that, for example, the four person might announce the verdict reached on behalf of all of the jury. Now, across from the jury box is the dock and that's where the accused or the offender sits. I say the accused whilst there is the presumption of innocence, an offender after a person has been found guilty or pleaded guilty. The dock area sits, as I said, exactly opposite the jury box. And in criminal trials where there's a jury and an accused person in that dock, it can be simply electrifying because the tribunal of fact is facing across from the accused and it's a very powerful moment when the jury is seated across from the accused because they bear the responsibility of determining whether or not the prosecution has proved its case against the accused beyond reasonable doubt. Immediately in front of the dock 
is what we call the bar table. At the bar table, we have typically very experienced lawyers and the real skill of an advocate in my view is to be persuasive and part of that involves being able to see the nuances and the subtleties that is all the different perspectives of the evidence. Typically the Crown or the prosecution sits at the end of the bar table closest to the jury box at the other end of the bar table, closest to the dock where the accused or the offender is seated, is the defence team and that might be a barrister or counsel or a solicitor or both. Behind the bar table you will see um, the public gallery and above uh, uh, that part of the public gallery there's an additional um, gallery uh, up on the first floor. This is where members of the public in open court proceedings can come and observe the proceedings. As I think I mentioned earlier, we operate on a principle in this country generally of open justice. That means that anybody, any member of the public is entitled to come into a court at any time and watch the proceedings as uh, they're unfolding. And for students, and for anybody who's thinking of doing law, and that's a very worthwhile thing to do from time to time. People can also, if appropriate, observe proceedings via the screen, but that's a matter that needs to be arranged with the judge's associate or the court officer. So that's the layout of the courtroom. Generally speaking, um, the courts in this complex are um, laid out in the, the same way. Courts in the Queen Square complex, which is the newer complex of the Supreme Court, don't have 12-person um, uh, jury boxes because we don't conduct criminal trials in those courts. But generally speaking, the layout of the courtroom, but for that, is the same.